Hi everyone, I'm Meg Smith, and welcome to the fifth installment of our series on reform movements in Kansas. In this video, we will learn about the socialist movement that emerged in Kansas following the end of the People's Party in the early 20th century. Socialism is a term used to describe political and economic theories that advocate for community control of the means of production and distribution, usually through a centralized government. Socialism has been used to describe different economic and political systems throughout history. Not every socialist system is alike, but they share an opposition to an economic system based on supply and demand with little or no government regulation, and the belief that community ownership of the means of production will lead to a better distribution of wealth and a more balanced society. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, socialism emerged in response to the extreme economic and social changes caused by the Industrial Revolution. As mentioned in previous videos, the rise of industrialization made a small number of people extremely wealthy, while most of the country lived below the poverty line. The People's Party, known as the Populists, had sought to address these imbalances, but declined in the late 1890s. This left poor farmers and miners without a political party that advocated for their best interest. For this reason, the Socialist Party in Kansas emerged to fill the power vacuum left by the fall of the populist. The Socialist Party's political platform was very similar to the populist and included reforms such as fair treatment of workers, including a shorter workday, safe working conditions, compensation in case of injury, child labor laws, and equal wages for women. Government ownership of telegraphs, telephones, railroads, and all means of public transportation. Congressional legislation stopping the waste of natural resources. A sliding scale income tax where the wealthy pay a larger percentage of their earnings than the poor. Free education to all children, including assistance for meals, clothing, and books when necessary. A government work program for the unemployed and election reforms such as universal suffrage, a method by which people can create laws and the ability to recall elected officials. Southeast Kansas became the state's socialist center due to its large southern and eastern European immigrant populations and the mining industry. Southeast Kansas was part of the tri-state mining region, which also included southwestern Missouri and northeastern Oklahoma. Mining was not an appealing occupation to many Americans, so the tri-state mining region attracted immigrants from Great Britain, France, Italy, and the Balkan states. Socialism was particularly popular with miners because they were at the mercy of wealthy mine owners. They dealt with hazardous working conditions, such as dangerous respiratory diseases, tunnel collapses, and gas explosions. They also had low pay, long hours, no fringe benefits, and could only buy necessities at company stores. Company stores were typically located in remote areas where everyone is employed by the same company, such as a coal mine. The company stores set ridiculously high prices because they had no competition. For these reasons, the Socialist Party was popular in southeastern Kansas, and socialist publications further increased the party's popularity. In 1895, Julius A. Whelan began publishing The Appeal to Reason, the largest socialist newspaper in the nation. Whelan based the paper out of Kansas City and later moved operations to the city of Girard in southeast Kansas. By 1901, The Appeal to Reason had a circulation of around 100,000 people. At its height, the newspaper's circulation reached 760,000 people, which was very large for any newspaper at this time. Many reformers wrote for Appeal to Reason, including Upton Sinclair. Sinclair's well-known book, The Jungle, about immigrant workers in the Chicago meatpacking industry, was first published in the paper. Emmanuel Julius worked as an editor for Appeal to Reason, where he met his wife, Marcette Haldeman. The two purchased the newspaper and had the idea to create series of books called Little Blue Books. The goal of these books was to get works of literature, a wide range of ideas, common sense knowledge, and differing points of view out to as large an audience as possible. Each book was sold for five cents, making them affordable for everyone. The Little Blue Books were published for 32 years, ending in 1951. Over 6,000 titles were published and more than 500 million copies printed. 
After World War II, the Federal Bureau of Investigation considered the books a threat to national security, which led to a decline in the number of bookstores willing to sell the Little Blue Books. Socialism in Kansas, as well as across the country, reached a high point in 1912. In Kansas, the 1912 election saw socialists elected to nearly all of Crawford County's offices. Following this high point, socialism's popularity began to decline at the state and national level due to the beginning of World War I. Many of the party's leaders were imprisoned for speaking out against the war and their publications suppressed. The National Socialist Party was further weakened in 1919 when the Communists defected to form the Communist Labor Party. In the 1930s, during the Great Depression, jobs were in decline and socialism saw a brief rise in popularity across the United States. This popularity was short-lived as New Deal programs began taking effect and U.S. involvement in World War II created defense jobs and general prosperity. Thank you for watching. Our next video will cover the Progressive Movement, a series of campaigns that tried to make the United States a better society.